Did I solve Little Nightmares 3? You wanna bet? Oh! Hey, hey, hey! Welcome to my channel, everyone. I'm the Global Cherry, and we're going to unravel a secret together in this new Little Nightmares 3 trailer, as well as my theories. Before we begin, subscribe, like the video, and enjoy the show! <laughs> Bandai Namco and Supermassive Games have just released a new Little Nightmares 3 trailer, aptly named The Friendship Trailer. We're diving deep into it to uncover any hidden secrets and details you might have missed. If you've listened to the Sounds of Nightmares podcast, you already know that the children in Little Nightmares come from a place called the county. Their nightmares transport them to the nowhere, a terrifying realm only reachable through dreams, where unimaginable horrors lurk. In Little Nightmares 3, we follow two children, low and alone, as they navigate through the spiral, a twisted cluster of eerie locations within the nowhere, in a desperate attempt to find their way back home. Their journey takes them through spine-chilling places like the fun fair, the necropolis, and the gloomy factory. Lo is a boy wearing a white raven mask, and alone is a girl with red pigtails and a lime-colored hazardous suit covering her body and mouth. In the first scene of the friendship trailer, we see Lo and Alone traveling through a mirror, Lo's unique ability, reminiscent of Mono's ability, to travel through TVs. As they teleport, a dark shadow darts towards the back of the mirror, seemingly originating from the statue of a dweller clutching the mirror. This dweller might be a resident of the necropolis, possibly turned to stone by the monster baby. A crow perched on the dweller's head, ominous foreshadows the upcoming horrors they'll encounter. The mirror shatters after they pass through it, suggesting they may not be able to return the way they came. It's possible that throughout the game, they're desperately searching for mirrors to navigate through the spiral within the nowhere. But what drives Lo and Alone in their journey through the spiral? Lo, who has spent years trapped in the spiral, is driven by an unwavering determination to find a way home with Alone. He's obsessed with reaching a mythical place he believes holds the key to escaping the nowhere. Lo's care for Alone is clear as he checks on her well-being before helping her to her feet when they landed in the shower room, reminiscent of the one in Little Nightmares 1. Alone, like several characters in the series, is known for her quiet demeanor. However, her compassion sets her apart as seen when she quickly rushes to help Lo after he falls through a broken floorboard. If you look closely in this scene, you'll notice they're surrounded by suitcases, one of which might be the same one Six wakes up in during the first game, possibly hinting at a deeper connection. In an interview, Alone was described as a curious, incurable tinkerer who's irresistibly drawn to uncovering the secrets of the spiral. The trailer highlights their growing bond, emphasizing how their friendship will evolve throughout the game. The next scene in the trailer shows Lo and Alone opening umbrella made of crow feathers next to a body bag, which they use to glide over the sand dunes in the dark, eerie landscape of the necropolis with the windmill. In the distance, the monster baby roams ominously, suggesting that the body bags were likely intended for it. Following this, we see Lo and Alone throwing coal into a furnace while observing the fire alongside the gnomes. The camera angles seem intentionally designed to obscure the gnomes' shadows. A Clever nod to those familiar with the Hideaway DLC, where the true identities of these gnomes were revealed. It's exciting to see these cones make a return. The trailer also showcases more engaging puzzles that require teamwork between Lo and Alone. Whether you're playing in co-op mode or solo, they work together to navigate treacherous areas, with Lo using his bow for ranged combat, and Alone finishing enemies off with her wrench. In another scene, they're shown 
sneaking past a monster in a carnival tent who appears to be engrossed in an old typewriter. Perhaps the sound of the typewriter provides the perfect cover for them to sneak by, much like how we maneuvered past the teacher in Little Nightmares 2 when she played the piano. Some fans have speculated that the fun fair might have been the lady's original hideout before she relocated to the middle of the ocean. This theory seems plausible when you consider that the guests from the first game are present in the carnival. In a later scene, we see Lo and alone turning clock arms. What if this puzzle turns out to be the most crucial one in the Little Nightmare series? From the Sounds of Nightmares podcast, we've learned that time operates differently in the nowhere. Children remain children indefinitely. The fairy man mentioned that adults don't belong in the nowhere unless they've committed an act of torment so severe that they're granted passage. He even threatened Otto, a doctor who tormented children by trapping them in nightmares with the prospect of being taken to the nowhere. Yet Otto was obsessed with going there, driven by the hope of finding his sister Cece, the girl in the yellow coat. This ties into my earlier theory from my past videos of Otto being the doctor from Little Nightmares 2 and Six being his sister, who encounters her brother as a child. My point is, if time does not move for children in the nowhere, perhaps Lo and Alone are trying to find a way to make time work normally again? To break the cycle and escape the eternal nightmare of the nowhere, I recently came across an intriguing theory on Reddit about how Pale City came to be. The theory suggests that a massive cataclysm tore open the planet's crust, creating deep trenches and marines, and in the process, released a malevolent godlike entity. This entity took control of the tower by corrupting the broadcaster. Since it exists beyond the bounds of space and time, it's responsible for breaking both within the city. Its goal? To turn the world into a chaotic TV show where events from different time periods overlap like watching episodes in the wrong order. The trailer also shows Lo and Alone landing an amount of lollipops within the factory, which could be producing the same lollipops that Lollipop Boy uses to bash in Billy's porcelain head. But did this factory truly exist before Lollipop Boy? This theory also suggests that this malevolent entity orchestrated Six's betrayal to Mono to ensure that he would accept his fate as the new broadcaster, replacing the pre previous one who no longer was of use to the entity. What if Lo and Alone are now facing the same or similar entity, one even more malevolent than the monster baby, the sewer creature with multiple arms, or the lady? Perhaps this entity is the one that created the monster baby, using it to devastate the necropolis by turning its inhabitants to stone. Much like what's happening in the Maw. If this is the case, Lo and Alone might be up against a force more terrifying and powerful than anything we've encountered in the series so far. In the first Little Nightmares 3 trailer, we noticed black mist emerging from a broken mirror. This raises an intriguing possibility. What if, at some point, this mist isn't connected to Six? What if it's actually the malevolent entity using mirrors to spy on the dwellers or even travel through them? Imagine if the mirrors in the necropolis were broken, not just by Lowe's teleportation, but because because the residents were trying to destroy them, fearing this entity's presence. According to the game's website, Lo and Alone must work together to survive in a dangerous world filled with delusions, while trying to escape the grasp of an even greater threat lurking in the shadows. Will Little Nightmares 3 break the series' trend of bleak endings? Given the pattern so far, a happy ending seems unlikely. Imagine if during their confrontation with the entity, Lo ends up sacrificing himself himself for alone, potentially being buried below. Although I hate to see this happen, a Little Nightmares theorist had suggested that Lo might have a connection to death, making this a plausible outcome. If this is the case, once Lo is gone, Alone would be truly left alone. In my previous videos, I speculated that Alone might be the pigtail girl from the Little Nightmares comics who escaped from the hospital. However, considering the events of Little Nightmares 3, it's possible that Alone 
Joan could become the pigtail girl after the game's events. If she and Lo manage to make time flow normally again, it would explain why her hair has grown out while she was confined in the hospital. And both characters share a tinkerer spirit, alone with her wrench and the pigtail girl with her spoon. Ultimately, we'll find out the truth when the game will be out in 2025. That is all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this, especially if you love Little Nightmares. Let me know in the comments below your theories on what could happen in Little Nightmares 3. What will happen to Lo and Alone? Who is this entity they'll face? Thank you for watching, and that's all.